I've made several small changes with Platform Masters, and one of them that you can see right away are these buildings. They used to be pretty much a solid red, minus lighting effects, and now they've got quite a bit of detail on them. There's actually two separate themes in one. It's red, green, blue, combining to make white. And it also goes from dark, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, to really light. That's in case you're wondering, what's with this right here? This is because this texture right here is over 16384 pixels, and SDL does not work with that. And I haven't updated my code to reprocess the ground decal properly for that. So for now, I'm just going to be leaving it at the moment. It's just a temporary thing. And in case you're wondering, this is what it looks like far above. And this isn't the only world I made changes to, either. Mars Space Base now also has buildings, in pretty much the same way, except they don't seem to be goals as far as the ones in Earth Space Base did. What's the deal with that? Well, this space base is, in a way, under construction. If you look closely, they actually form a circle. It's kind of difficult to make out, but there's definitely a marked circle right there. And if you want to see those buildings up close, there you have it. And if you want to enter the buildings, click. Just press that button and the door will open. No problem, right? Pretty simple. And that's pretty much the edge of the buildings right here. But they loop, or at least they're supposed to loop. Crank up the speedometer a lot. Yeah, it looks like a whole big empty space. And there's an odd pixel right there. And hey, what do you know? Building's coming in, and goodbye. Nadara Highlands, however, has seen the biggest changes of them all. At first glance, it really don't seem like there's anything different. But if you remember here, where this road was going off over here, crossing this road, which is paralleling the channel, well, it sure looks a lot different. If you move up and down like this, you can clearly see that it's moving a lot more than it used to be, and the roads are a lot wider. The reason for that is I significantly reduced the visibility, and with that, I also had to update the ground decals so that they, well, worked properly with that new visibility. Up above, there's really nothing different other than the fact I've shifted the clouds. And there is a bug with the air taxis here, like this, with the fog. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but it's something I need to look into, find out what's going on to cause that. However, waiting for all this to come up. Ooh, that was close. Get swatted by that platform. There's more to those ground decals than you realize. Introducing the closest of all freeway entrance and exit ramps. And there's also some cars going by on here too, but they're kind of hard to see. Right there, masked by this banner here. Which you can, if you want to customize things a bit, you can actually remove this because it's not important. But here you can see the cars going really slowly. Because of the very bad weather conditions, they go slow. Remember, safety first. Even though they're robotically driven, safety still takes high est priority. And to kind of give you the idea on what all these ground decals look like, for... Yeah, it didn't work out as I was planning on. But here's another detail that I have in mind that will also be included in other worlds. And no, it's not snow either. It's actually signs. Much like the markings on the road, but a little different. I'll explain that in uh, another video when I get a much closer view of them. But those are supposed to be speed limit signs, believe it or not. That road way out there is so hard to see. But this isn't the only change that I've made as well. For some reason, it seems like that snow is a little different looking than it used to be. Hmm. Seems a little stronger. I wonder what's going on here. Well, to explain the precipitation in better detail, Ranisa Plains is what I'll be using for that. I want you to remember how the rain looks right here. I want you to remember that closely. 
There were several problems that I had with the previous rain system, although it's not a drastic problem that I had. Originally, I had the rain spaced one-eighth of a scaling unit all the way out to two scaling units, which is about where this tree right here is, approximately, give or take a little bit. Equal sign's not straight, train going by. And then beyond that, you have from two to four SU, they were spaced one quarter, inconsistent. So I wanted to go by and go correct that. And correct it, I did. Not only that, but I also increased the range of the range. And you might probably also be noticing that the amount of memory, the pixels drawn and total pixels drawn, are also significantly higher than they used to be. Don't worry about that if you have a really dinosaur system. The reason for that is you'll be able to customize the range of the rain. So, well, not only just the range, but also the spacing. To give you an idea, the range of the rain is, goes out to about where that tree right there is. It looks so much better with all these trees, don't it? But this tree right here, give or take, or maybe this one, this one's actually a little closer, is about how far the rain actually goes. Beyond that, it's just normal standard fog. But if you look closely here, it seems like the rain's a little different. Hmm, what is going on here? There's something odd. And no, it's actually not a bug. The reason for that is, it's another feature I've added into Platform Masters. Dynamic intensity. Yes, dynamic intensity. It changes with time. You remember how intense it was when I first loaded this world, right? It's definitely a lot fainter now. Well, noticeably fainter, I should say. Higher up, of course, there's not really much else to see other than the usual effects from the rain. But you can definitely clearly see quite an effect here with the amazing rain dynamic opacity. But to really show you that, I'm going to really crank up the time lapse on this. Just to give you an idea, remember this, right? Remember how strong it is? I'm going to load a random world and return. Wow, it's a lot more intense, isn't it? Now, I'm going to throw the time at 120 times real time. Ready? Here goes. And I did say 120 times real time, right? Well, you can easily see how the snow is intensifying so much. And you pretty much can't even see those ground decals here now at all. It's a full-on blizzard. Yeah, blizzard. Except it doesn't have the time requirements. And I hate when I hit that spring. Come on. And as you watch closely, watch these ground decals gradually coming in as the snow fades away. Now you can pretty easily see those details. And the snow is still getting less and less intense. And just so you know, this whole cycle of up and down takes two hours. So yes, if you want to see the whole effect, stand here for two hours. And now it's re-intensifying. Watch as those cars gradually fade away and become very difficult to see. Very hard to see, and uh, the roads have pretty much disappeared. You can actually see them, but just barely. Ronisa Plains is no exception. Now, you can see that it faded to almost nothing, but now it's getting really, really intense. And now uh, it's kind of fading away again. To almost nothing, you can barely see something there. And now uh, it's coming back. You might notice it's a whole lot faster. That's because Ronisa Plains instead uses a half hour for a whole cycle as opposed to just one hour. And for the upper areas, just to kind of give you that idea, watch as that Keverin River gradually fades away to almost invisible. And then it fades back into view where it's all nice and sharp and clear, pristine. So much detail. 
and it's fading away. Ain't this fun just watching the weather going by 120 times faster in real time? All the wonders you can do in programming, especially when you have to test something that takes such a long time otherwise. This video was created by Ella Lilia. Thank you for watching.